It's easier than ever to create UX storyboards using free AI tools like Bing Image Creator and Dolly. And if you use them right, these UX storyboards can save you massive amounts of time. A UX storyboard is a lot like the storyboards that filmmakers or animators use. But instead of visualizing shots and action, a UX storyboard visualizes how a customer might use your product in their everyday life. Tools like ChatGPT and MidJourney let you create images by typing in a description of what you want. But the trick is to figure out exactly the right prompt to get the results you want. And if you've tried it, you know that this can be very frustrating and can involve lots of trial and error. So today, you're gonna save hours of time experimenting. Here's Maurice Sai, product designer at Geocaching, with some hot storyboarding tips. Make sure to stay to the end to find out how to get your free storyboarding cheat sheet. Now let's get into it. My name is Maurice. I am a staff designer at Geocaching HQ. Uh, I joined the Game Thinking group a couple of years ago and did a project with them and it completely transformed the way that I see and do products. And I learned how great storyboarding is, especially to get like stakeholder feedback earlier in the process. And thing about that is part of the reason I really like being a UX designer is because I don't have to illustrate things, but I'm like, oh no, now I do have to illustrate things and I don't, I'm not a really good illustrator. Thank goodness it's come around a time when uh, there are AI storyboarding tools and the thing about geocaching, it's very real world. So context is really important. So I do have to show people doing stuff out in the real world, not just on their screens. So let me tell you how to draw a storyboard in 10 minutes with AI. I used an AI tool called Dolly to make this in 10 minutes. However, it took me three hours to master the tool. I made this presentation so you don't have to spend those three hours. So here's a tool, it's called Bing Image Creator. It produces image from natural language prompts. Super easy to use. You just type in a text prompt in the upper bar up there. And then it's, it's gonna generate four options that you can copy, download, or save to your collection. It seems pretty simple to make these things, right? Like just type in every part of your story, it'll make a storyboard for you. But it's a little more difficult than that. So the first challenge I ran into is telling a coherent story. When Bing generates prompts, and if you don't give it clear guidelines, the styles and the characters will end up all over the place. This is supposed to be a story of someone going outside, looking for a geocache, which is a small hidden treasure and finding it. But it doesn't feel that way because you have three different styles, three different characters. None of it feels like it really comes together. So to solve this problem, I used a template. I spent three hours perfecting the template, but once I did, it was super duper easy. That's when I was able to like start making things in 10 minutes. Here's the template and I'm gonna share my template so that you can reuse it. Here's an example of a good prompt. Black and white line drawing storyboard of a woman with short black hair wearing a beanie and nature in front of bushes, looking at her phone with a smile on her face. The reason I think this is a good prompt is because every time I ran that prompt, it got me something that I that I liked, got me what I was looking for. And no matter how many times I reran it, that's what I got. So the template has two parts. The first part highlights the elements that need to remain consistent across all the frames. So who are the characters? What's the art style? It always has to be the first part of your frame. It always has to be at the very start because if you put it at the end, Bing, Bing tends to disregard it. Let's break up that first part. The first part, which says black and white line drawing storyboard. This is the only phrase that consistently returned this particular art style. Even small changes totally messed it up. They made it look too sketchy. They made them look like photographs, this phrase is exactly what you want. So feel free to copy it. The second part of the first half is to create distinct features for characters. So include details like hair color, length, clothing, accessories. So woman with short black hair wearing a beanie, much better than 25 year old woman. It tells you exactly what that person's supposed to look like. The second half of the template is about the elements that change from frame to frame. So like context, actions, expressions. In the first part of the second half, it tells you the real world context. If you don't know the context, don't make it up. But if you do know the context in which it's going to be used, add it to your prompt. Then you describe the character's actions. And then this is where you show the emotions by describing facial expressions. But don't use happy or sad. Don't use emotion words because AI will exaggerate the emotions. 
happy is going to return like creepy joker like smiles and sad looks like so sad you don't really believe it like you don't believe anyone's going to be that sad going outside <laughs> finally if bing isn't providing the angle you want in the frame something you can do is add to the very start of the prompt So for example, I wanted a version of this woman looking at her phone but a full body shot. And no matter how many times I ran the prompt it always showed it like half body, but I wanted full body. So just add that angle you want at the at the start of the prompt. Once that worked for me were full body, half body shot from below, shot from above, close up shot, extreme close up shot. Challenge number 2 is drawing interactions. Drawing a user interacting with UI using Bing alone is really tough. Like if I wanted to show a device and then tapping a button, they would either miss the button or they draw a hand inside inside the phone tapping a button is crazy. Also, it cannot spell. <laughs> I tried to make it write spoiler photo and instead it said spooter. So here's a solution. Let's say I want an image of someone pressing start on a map to begin navigation. First, I used Bing to generate a frame of a hand holding a phone with a street map. We're not even going to bother with the button right now. Then I uploaded that same image to a mirror board and used the pen tool to draw buttons and text, and that got me the results that I wanted. Here's a pro tip: save your favorites to your collection so you can rerun the original prompt. Uh, I made this mistake. I made a bunch of frames, and I thought that Bing was going to save all of them. It didn't. It only saved the last twenty frames. Uh, you can try it at Bing.com/create. And uh, this is me. Feel free to get in contact. AI tools are evolving fast. By the time you watch this video, some of what we're talking about here might even be out of date. So that's why we've put together a cheat sheet with our current recommendations for storyboard prompts. And we're going to keep that up to date and keep you up to date as things change. To download your free cheat sheet, go to gamethinking.io/storyboards. The link is in the description. And if you want to learn more about the power of UX storyboards, check out my interview with Pavel Samsonov, UX lead at AWS. right here. It's powerful stuff and it can make a real difference in your design work. Happy storyboarding. I'll see you soon.